Welcome to Hackintosh from Start to Finish Part 7. This is going to be the last video of this series, at least for a while. I've taken you guys from the very beginning of just, is it right for you? We've picked out our hardware, we've actually installed OS X. Now we're up to dual booting with Windows, and you should have a completely working Hackintosh system now. You should be getting some great performance, and your needs should be met with a system like this. So since that is the case, this video is just going to be some conclusive remarks, uh, just some tips, some advice here and there. And maybe later, once some more things come out, maybe like 10.7.3, might end up being, just for the sake of the argument, just say that it ends up being a lot harder than it should be. Then I will do a video on that and throw add it on to the series, make that episode 8. But at this point in time, there's really no need to have a part 8 in the series because, like I said, I've gone over pretty much everything you guys need to know to have a fully working system dual booted with Windows. So I just have some final tips for you guys. So the first piece of advice I have is to just simply do your research. I've been stressing this throughout the entire video series for a reason. It's because it's very important. Now, that's not just with hardware. You don't have to just research your hardware. You have to research your software. So say the next iteration of Mac OS X was to come out tomorrow. Don't just rush to it and upgrade because it's out. On a Mac, you could do that. You could reboot no problem. But on Hackintosh, I really recommend before you do any sort of update, and uh, just real quick, I don't think I've straight said this, I've mentioned it, but you can just go right up to software update under Hackintosh and update through that. It will work, but um, a lot of the times, like I said in a very early part of the series, that a lot of times upgrades can be problematic. They'll still boot usually, but maybe you'll lose audio or you'll, you'll, you'll lose network. So you'll have to reinstall some kecks in order to get those back. So I know I've said that you can update, but I don't think I really mentioned that it was through software update. It doesn't have to be a combo update, but although I do recommend combo updates, but those are much greater in file size because those are not Delta updates. But as I was saying, if a new iteration of Mac OS X comes out, say the next update, don't just rush to an upgrade. I would highly recommend you wait and wait for the early adopters to do it first. So maybe someone will have your hardware and they can say, oh yeah, I updated but I lost this, or I updated and it worked great. So I would just wait. You can be an early adopter if you'd like, but make sure that you back up your heart, your, all your files first, because if something does go wrong and you can't get it to boot back up again, then you've pretty much lost that installation, unless you create like another Mac OS X partition on another hard drive or something and then copy your files over, but that's a huge pain. So with doing your research, just put the time in and you'll get a great result out. The next tip I have for you guys is, like I said throughout this entire series, is to just back up your data constantly. Now. A lot of people don't back up their data, and I don't understand this because now you guys really don't have an excuse. Because in OS 10, you have Time Machine. All you need is an external hard drive, and the Time Machine it does everything for you. You plug a hard drive in, you hit, you turn Time Machine on, and all your stuff is being backed up. Time Machine can back up multiple hard drives, as you guys have seen in my other videos. I have my 60 gigabyte solid state, a 500 gig, and a one terabyte. I bought a two terabyte external drive. So Time Machine is constantly backing up all of those hard drives. Another thing you guys might want to do is use a program called Carbon Copy Cloner. I believe it's just a free uh, application. I'm like 99% sure it's free. But what that'll do is it'll actually make a perfect clone of your, say your boot drive. You can, you can have a clone any hard drive you'd like. But say for example your boot drive. So before you install, say the next update of Mac OS X, you're not sure if it's going to work or not, use Carbon Copy Cloner. Like in addition to Time Machine, these aren't replacements. I, I use all of these together. But uh, Carbon Copy Cloner will take your hard drive here, create an exact image, and put that image on another hard drive. And so if your hard drive does mess up, if the update messes up your installation, you can simply just go back into a different partition and you can just copy that and tell Carbon Copy Cloner to make the, take that image that it made and put it back on that hard drive. And then once you reboot again, you'll just be back up and running like nothing ever happened. I believe even your bootloader is included. So going back to Time Machine for just one second, if you actually use Time Machine and it backs up your system drive, what you installed Mac OS X on, if you try to boot from your Unibeast drive and restore from that Time Machine backup, it will work perfectly. However, it will not include your bootloader. So after that point, once it's done restoring from the backup, you still need that Unibeast drive. So you just plug that in and you boot back into OS X through Unibeast like we all know how to by now. And then you have to reinstall Chimera. I know it's called Chimera. I've gotten tons of comments, I know. But that's just the way I say it because I say these things in style. Sorry, I'll never do that again. So I'm not going to make a video on this for, for you guys. But if you guys do want to see a video of me backing up from a Time Machine backup just to see how it works, you can request it. And if I get enough people really wanting to see it, then I will make a pretty much like a part 8 of this series about it. Another useful tip for backing up your data is to have multiple hard drives. So for example, on my 60 gigabyte solid state drive, I have no documents. I don't have any music. I don't have any documents. I don't have any videos, anything. All I have is my applications and my OS, and that is it. 
So on my other hard drive, my 500 gigabyte hard drive, I have a, another copy of um, Lion that I use in case my main one goes down. I made that with Carbon Copy Cloner, by the way. So I have one of those. I also have Windows that you saw, that 30 gigabyte partition. And the rest is for my Final Cut document, sort of like a scratch disk. So once I'm editing with Final Cut, all my video projects and events, they all go to that partition instead of my boot drive. And for my one terabyte, that's where I store all my um, videos, like my uh, stuff from iTunes, all my music, my pictures, everything like that gets stored to that hard drive. So for example, if my one terabyte goes out, I'll lose a lot of stuff. But number one, it's backed up with Time Machine, everything on there. Number two, I won't lose all my Final Cut events because those are on a complete different disk. So if you have different hard drives, which I highly recommend, that's one of the reasons I really love having a tower is you can have many hard drives. So the more hard drives you have, then the more safe that your data will be. And the last thing I have for this video, which isn't really a tip, but it's something that you guys really should do, is just check out TonyMacX86.com. They have a great downloads page, great forums, a great blog. It's constantly being updated pretty much every single day. They have hundreds and thousands of members on the forum that are always asking questions, always answering questions. It's a great community to get involved in. And like I said in a previous video, that's where I learned a lot of the stuff I know is from all these very intelligent people there. So I'm always on those forums. I'm trying to help out people. I'm, even I am asking questions. I mean, I, I'd like to think I know what I'm doing, but I'm in no way a master. Like, I didn't design any of this stuff. I just know how to use it very well. There's a big difference there, and I would like to learn more about how this stuff works, how to write stuff like this, but that's one day in the future. So with that, I just want to stress that if you have a question that I didn't answer here, you could request a video of me for it, but it would probably be faster since I'm in school and everything to just go on the Tony Mac forums and ask there because they always have people just going through the forums, very intelligent people that will always answer your questions. So that wraps up my Hackintosh from start to finish series, at least for now. Like I said, I'll probably update it more in the future, but um, it really helped me out if you guys like this video. Also, it would help me out if you subscribed. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be doing this Hackintosh stuff for a long time. I'll be posting unboxings and tutorials and stuff for a very long time. I'm going nowhere, so if you subscribe, expect a lot more content like this and a lot more content not like this. Alright, that's it guys. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. I hope I've helped you guys in this series getting your Hackintosh up and running. Please look forward to more content in the future and I'll see you guys in my next video.